and uh, we are delighted to be co-presenting this series on Cinema of Resistance with the School of the Arts. And I'd like to start by thanking um, the School of the Arts, Dean Carol Becker, Gavin Browning, and everyone on their team for working with us to, um, to present this series and for giving us a special privilege of being able to show two of the films in our series here in this um, brand new screening room in the Lenfest Center for the Arts. So tonight is the last film in our series. Um, we're showing Swagger, which is a film by Olivier Babinet, and we're especially honored to have the director, Olivier Babinet, here with us tonight. Um, he's going to say a few words about the film before it's screened, and then stay with us for a Q&A after the screening, where he'll be joined by Professor Brent Edwards in a discussion moderated by Nora Philippe. So I'd like to second thank Nora Philippe, who's the curator of this series on Cinema of Resistance, and always such a joy and, and pleasure to work with her. Thank you, Nora. I also want to thank the funders that made this series possible, the Knapp Family Foundation and Cultural Services of the French Embassy, and, um, and thank all of our other co-sponsors at Columbia that have helped us publicize this event so broadly, and, and of course, thank to all of you for, for being here tonight. So, swagger, the title of the film. Um, the French also use the word swag, as in tu as du swag, you have style. But the, the word swagger isn't, isn't used in French. It's an American term, and you'll actually see that many of the protagonists in this film um, look to American culture, refer a lot to American culture, have, have American icons. And so perhaps that's one of the reasons that this is selected as the title. This is a French documentary film uh, directed by Olivier Babinet, and it was presented at the Cannes Film Festival in 2015. It's Olivier's second feature-length film after Robert Mitchum is Dead, which was also selected in Cannes in 2011. Swagger was nominated for the César as Best Documentary. It's been critically acclaimed and has been shown but just a few times here in New York. It was part of the Hip Hop, hip -hop Film Festival this summer. This may be the second screening. So it's uh, a, a real honor to be able to share it with you this evening. This film was born in Aulnay-sous-Bois and Sèvran, which are in Seine-Saint-Denis. Uh, Seine and for those of you who don't know contemporary France very well, these, are, these cities are among the poorest and most marginalized cities in the country, just a couple of kilometers outside of Paris, and what's referred to as La Banlieue. And the teenagers who live there, most of them issus de l'immigration, as they say in France, though often not first generation, but second or third generation, still being referred to as issue de l'immigration. These teenagers are almost systematically represented in the mainstream French press as other, as strangers, as terrorists or gangsters, at the very least as troublemakers. They're very often uh, shown in the kind of perspective that they're shown in the film this evening. So Olivier Babini took a very different perspective in this project, which began, in fact, as an artist residency. His filmmaking method, the way he worked with the teenagers before and during the shoot, his faith in the power of cinema, in the power of dreams and imagination, make Swagger a film of resistance, or so is our argument by presenting it in this film on cinema of resistance. And so here I want to invite you to have this question in mind as you're watching this film. How is it a film about resistance? What are the teenagers resisting, and how, and why? And what are they affirming as well? And then I think this is one of the questions that will be talked about in the Q&A afterwards. This, um, this tribute to the strength and beauty of these girls and boys is also a very joyful way to end our film series. So it's good to look for joy when you're resisting, and that's what we're trying to do this evening. Um, now I'm going to ask Olivier to say a few words about his film, and then we will watch it together. Thank you. I'm really happy to be here and proud. <laughs> and um, uh, I don't know exactly what to say, but uh, mm, it's a movie I, I never expected to to make. But uh, I was um, working in that school because uh, uh, people from the state of uh, Saint Anthony asked me to to teach. Uh, uh, to the kids how to make movies. So I spent uh, uh, not one, uh, one year and a half, two years in, in that school uh, to teach uh, to the students how, how to make movies. 
and uh, we did uh, eight short movies uh, with uh, uh, no money and, uh, and, 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 and so short movies were their sh short movies, science fiction uh, uh, movies and, uh, and, fan um, and uh, fantastic movies. And after that I have decided to, to, to make uh, a movie about them. And uh, when I say I've never expected to do this movie, it's because uh, I'm a fiction uh, director. And, um, and, uh, but I was there. Uh, the reason I was there was not to make a movie, it was to teach them how to make a movie. But uh, after two years um, uh, in the middle of, of them, in the middle of a school, uh, um, it, uh, suddenly it was really important for me to to, to give them the, the mic and, uh, and uh, because uh, uh, the, the political situation in France was so bad uh, with the terrorist attack and how the, the media were talking about um, that kind of kids and, uh, and uh, it is am amalgam, I don't, I don't know if it's in, an English word, but uh, um, so that's why I decided to, 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 to make this movie. And, uh, and uh, it's a documentary, uh, uh, and um, I was scared to, to do a documentary because I never done that. I was scared about the docu documentary part, so so I have uh, fight with my weapons, and my, my weapons were the the, fi uh, uh, the fiction aspect of the movie. But uh, it's really a documentary. I mean, uh, uh, it's, sometimes it looks like a fiction, but. Uh, um, uh, what the kids are talking is uh, always true, but sometimes they are lying a little bit. <laughs> uh, so uh, I will be there after the screening and uh, uh, have a nice uh, treat to Only Super. <laughs> So I'm here with Brent Hayes Edwards, who works at Columbia University. He's a professor of, at the Department of English and Comparative Literature. I have an updated biography here on my, on my telephone, so that's why I'm reading here. And the Center um, for Jazz Studies at Columbia University. His books include The Practice of Diaspora 2003 and Epistrophes, Jazz and the Literary Imagination that was published this very year. And his current projects include a book on the love jazz scene in downtown Manhattan in the 70s and the restoration of actually a film of Sweet Willy Rollbar's Orientation, an experimental film made by Julius Hemphill and the black artist group of St. Louis in 1972, which will be screened here on campus in January 2018. And I would like to add also that you've lived a number of years in Paris and taught in Paris. And Olivier Babinet. I think the most important thing that you should know is that he made this film that you've just seen. But he, um, we were discussing how to frame his biography. Um, he um, made for almost 10 years after high school um, commercials and music clips and you escaped that world and you uh, actually started a career as a filmmaker with a series called Le Bidule, which is rather un 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 it would be the thing. Um, which was a sort of um, of comical series on television, Canal Plus, and which gave you the, the freedom to experiment uh, with uh, with filmmaking. Then you made a, a, um, a, a short film called uh, C'est plutôt genre Johnny Walker. So it's Johnny Walker's. It's more like. It's Johnny more like Johnny Walker's style, which got an, an amazing amount of, of, of awards in, um, in festivals in France and as well. And then you uh, made this uh, feature-length fiction called Robert Mitchum is Dead. You actually can see the American influence in Olivier Babinet's filmography. And Swagger, uh, again, so was, was released in 2016 in France. And the press uh, said something that is uh, very simple, but I think very important. C'est le film qu'on attendait depuis longtemps. It's the film that we had been waiting uh, for so long. Um, so again, thank you for joining this conversation. I'll start with one question, uh, first question to Olivier. 
Olivier is really curious about Brent's comments and Brent wants to ask questions to Olivier, so I'll try to... <laughs> um, I don't want to answer questions, I just want to listen to your comment. So, um, no, I would like again, um, so in terms of, um, so I don't know in terms of, of you know, the, the documentary landscape in the United States, but um, um, in the French production context, it's very hard to make such a film because it's at, at the same time um, uh, considered as a documentary, but with fiction means and language. And um, I, 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 so it's a sort of UFO, an OVNI. And I would like you to um, explain us really how you worked with the teenagers, um, how you wrote the, for instance, the fiction scenes that you, you were talking about this as an introduction about your, your weapons, I like the term. Um, and also I know that the, the teenagers sometimes were involved in the crew, so I would like, uh, I would like you to develop on what, what was the, the experience of the, of the shooting for them. Um, but it, it, it was not a pa participative movie? Uh, because, uh, as I, I have said before the screening, I have worked with the kids during two years before. Uh, so, so when I decided to do Swagger, um, my idea was to give them uh, the mic and, and, and to, to write all the scenes of the movie uh, um, uh, en, en fonction de ce qu'ils avaient raconté, quoi, en partant de ce qu'ils avaient raconté. Yeah, as drawing from the what, what they had told him and what their testimonies. So, uh, so, so we have started with the in interview part, and uh, um, we have started with the tallest of them just before they they, they leave the, the school, and one year after the time to find the money to to continue the movies. Uh, one year after, we, we did the interview of the smallest one. And, uh, and um, during this year, I have rewrite and rewrite the story, uh, uh, inspired uh, with what they say. And uh, after the second part of the interview, I have finished writing the, the scenes. And, uh, and my, my idea was really to do a movie about teenagers first. Uh, I mean, before teenagers from the the project of friends, uh, because when I was there uh, in the middle of teenager, it, it was re reminding me my own uh, 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 teenager. Uh, yes, and uh, and uh, it was for me the most important thing was to 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 do a movie about indiv individuality. And uh, because uh, most of the time, the way uh, that kind of kids are represented in media is uh, uh, a band of uh, guys uh, talking uh, loud, and uh, we always uh, list, uh, we always hear the, the big mouse. And and because I was there, uh, I, I saw all the kind of kids you can find there, like. Uh, in the world, very shy kids, very, very shy, like Aisha too, the girl who cannot say her name at the beginning, and uh, popular kids, and uh, so that was the most important thing to, to, to show all the kind of kids you can, uh, you can find in a, in a school. And at the same time, you were not, of course, showing a sort of sample. So I would like you um, to explain how you, not you chose, because it's not exactly that, but how you came to uh, working with, like, because you have 13, there are 13 um, um, boys and girls, I may say. Um, how, how did it happen, this cast? Again? You mean, um, why, yeah, why, why, it's, why are they? Uh, the, the principle was everybody is welcome in the movie, so everybody can who want to be in the movie will be in the movie. Uh, uh, because uh, uh, I, I, I needed, I needed uh, many kids. Uh, there is uh, more than 100 kids in the movie. So it was a big part of the work to go in every day and asking the kids, do you want to be part of the movie? Uh, 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 give this paper to your parents and sign it, please. And uh, it was a lot of work. And, uh, and we were asking to all the kids, OK, you want to be part of the movie, but do you want to participate in the uh, s some special uh, part of the movie. Uh, we are looking for kids who are ready to answer 200 questions 
with two cameras and a crew, and uh, and we we are looking for kids uh, that, that answering question and not just say yeah yeah I don't know yeah I don't care for you. I mean because nobody gonna see that kind of movie with teenagers just say oh yeah yeah I don't know. Uh, so do you want if you want to participate to that we are looking for kids who, are, who want to talk and uh, and so. Most of the kids were saying, oh, no, 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 I don't want to do that. I, I want to be part of the movie, but I don't want to, to do that. I think when I was a teenager, it was the same. I would say, oh, no, no, no I don't want to do that. But um, because I was shy, and uh, now I'm, uh, because I'm making a movie, I'm, I'm, I'm sure to, to, to public. You have to be, yeah, talk, but, in public. But uh, uh, so maybe there were, uh, I don't remember, uh, 25 kids or, or more ready to, to participate to, to the interview part. And after that, the choice was uh, uh, to, to, uh, was, uh, to have girls, boys, small, tall, shy, not shy, uh, popular, not popular, uh, to be representative of the kids you can find there and, and everywhere. Okay. Question. <laughs> I mean, there's one interview where you say um, that the those who agreed, the kids who agreed to jouer le jeu of the movie, who agreed to participate, that it actually had a community-making effect. Those who participated in the film became a kind of community after the film and in the years, the couple years since the film. And that's an amazing idea. I think the most powerful thing to me to start with is, is the collaborative method to develop a film um, through that collaborative method, not to try to depict them as objects of study, but to say, let's start with you. What do you want to talk about? That's a powerful idea that one has to really think about in, in relation to the fabric of the film. But I would want to highlight a few choices that you and your cinematographer made. I mean, first of all, you, you're not in the film. You don't make visible the interlocutor. I think it's it's pretty apparent that there are questions, right? You get a sense that they're answering certain questions about rather broad topics, um, like religion, uh, like love. Have you ever been in love? How do you feel about the bled, about, the, about your home country, if, you, if you're from an immigrant family, um, about the, the environment, about drugs and gangs? But you could have done it in a way that would have put your voice in the film and had it much more of a dialogic um, back and forth between you entering that space and then responding and you deliberately cut yourself out and not only yourself it's powerful to me that you choose although there are a few the foster mother really two teachers um, it's you more not or the, less call, it's, cut it's, the adults out it's not the foster mother it's a it's a the real oh, that's mother, the real mother. mother. Okay. it's uh, when, when he's talking uh, I can I just can see my mother one hour uh, a week oh that's when they go to see the mother but that you choose not to take, to, not to foreground the adult parts of the world is also a really powerful choice um, in terms of the way you're putting the film together. But it's an economic choice. <laughs> <laughs> if I really want to be honest. It's, it's an economic choice, but it, but it changes the way, I, I think the film, I've been watching it over and over again, and in relation to some of the other films about this social, social milieu, there's a, there's a sort of genre or tradition now, um, it really, it starts out in a way that seems to point in one direction and then it takes you in a completely different form. It starts out by introducing the characters and there's that scene of them entering the school and the, the surveillant, the, the guard saying, uh, pas de capuche, the, take off your hood, take off your earphones, and you think that we're going to get a social documentary of the, the space of the school. We think we're going to enter a classroom and see those 12 kids in a classroom, and you don't take us there. You take us to these personal, individual testimonies, the individual voices of, of the, the main characters of the film. And it really is not about, although it's the scene, the setting, the scene is the school. It's actually not about education. It's not what one expects in a kind of social documentary about education in the banlieue, if you're familiar with those kinds of films in France. 
I'm, I'm just trying to highlight some of the deliberate choices that you're making even as you're collaborating because those are fascinating to me and they, they give the film a flavor that's that's very unusual, that's very unique. That's a comment more than a, what you said you didn't want me to ask you questions. <laughs> I'm trying not to ask you questions. Uh, I could ask you questions. <laughs> Can, can, can I? I? <laughs> if you want to, I do have, I do have something that's more a question. Uh, yes, that's true that it's not a movie about school, and uh, for me the school is uh, like their own brain. It's like yeah. a mental space, and, and uh, uh, yes. <laughs> can I ask a question? <laughs> okay. I mean, one, in, in relation to what I just said, one of the interviews with you, you say uh, that it's, uh, in French, uh, un film qui, qui ne regarde pas la banlieue, mais nous fait voir le monde à travers le regard de ses enfants. The, a film that doesn't uh, look at it, that doesn't uh, doesn't depict the banlieue, the, the, the suburbs around Paris, but makes us see the world through the gaze of the children of the banlieue. And that shift is a radical shift um, in approach. Okay, my question is about editing it's an, and it's another deliberate choice that I think uh, really fascinates me about the way the film is put together it, it specifically it's that you have these um, there are moments where the kids are together where uh, uh, Regis the maybe most memorable character in the film and Salimata who's the one who's wearing the leather jacket with the kind of rhinestones it, they, where they, they stride through and he's wearing the fur. Um, there's another scene with Elvis and uh, Abu, is it? The, Paul, the, the Indian There's guy. another film with Paul and Elvis where they're doing the fake interview. So there, there are moments when they're together, but by and large the film is constructed of individual voices. But you do something really unusual in the way you intersperse shots of the other children in the midst of the interviews. And I've been thinking ever since the first time I saw this and I've been trying to digest it and trying to make sense of, uh, of why it's so moving. It has a lot to do with the mood that that creates. You don't... Well, there are a couple of scenes. There's a, there's a scene where... Um, what's his name? Nazario is talking and Elvis is down the hall. So Nazario is the one with the, curl, the, sheep, the sheep hair. And Elvis, the one in the orange shirt, is down the hall, but not quite in the frame. There's another scene where Mariama, the, the little girl, is, she's actually not talking, it's a voiceover, but you see her and behind her you see Regis on a table. And Elvis walks by those, so there are a few moments where they share the frame, but most of them, they don't share the frame. Most of it is you have the individual speaker, and then the, it's interspersed with a shot of one of the other kids in a, in a way that throws into question what it means to think about them as a community, what it means to think about them listening to each other. Because it feels like or you're seeing them as though they're listening to each other, and sometimes there are gestures of reaction and laughter, but they're also clearly, almost always, not in the same room. And sometimes they're looking away, and sometimes they're looking down, sometimes they seem to be paying attention, and sometimes they don't. And that space, opening up that space where it's not, we're in the same frame and I'm looking at you and listening to you, but there's... I almost got the sense that it's as though these kids are listening to each other, they're in the same, um, they're sharing a space of listening and uh, mutual attention even when they're not in the same room. Mm -hmm. That the community is so powerful that it creates that effect that even though you're in your apartment and I'm on another floor in another building, we can almost hear each other. So I just wanted to ask you to talk about that choice I know that your cinematographer must have been involved in that choice, um, but that choice creates, to me, it, it's crucial, it's central to the, to the mood that the film creates, that back and forth. 
But as I say before the, the screening, I was scared about the interview part and the documentary part. But I knew that it was the most important part of the movie, and, uh, and uh, I have tried to find um, a way to, to show that and a, a way to keep the attention of the audience because it was for me really important that the audience uh, uh, listen to those kids and what they have to say. So first it was basic, just find a, a spec spectacular way of shooting an uh, interview. Uh, uh, so it was. It's not only a question of editing, but it was uh, during the shooting. It's a question of direction of the eyes and color on the back and position of, cam of cameras and everything. But uh, and, and and the editing was nine months. So it took us a long, very long time to do that and to and 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 we never on a jamais trahi. Betrayed. Yeah, we we never betrayed what the cool thing at yeah. that moment. Uh, for for example, when Aston say, uh, "Oh, uh, uh, if if my if my best friend was French, uh, it, it's impossible for me." And uh, we we see Regis making this because he don't think the same way than than her. So so it's always um, we. With the editor, we have re I think we have respect uh, what they could s uh, feel at, at this moment. Uh, 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 but uh, but the, the, the community that you, you were talking about the community. It, 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 so you, the, the movie gives the impression that uh, little by little there is a community and they are listening to each other. Especially when Aisatu at the end, Aisatu it's a girl who cannot say her name at the beginning. At the end, she say, uh, uh, um, uh, "I think it's interesting to to talk with each other and to to, to share your point of view." Uh, uh, this thing happened not really during the shooting, maybe during the shoot, not during the interview because they they were really alone. Uh, but at the end, it's true. At the end, uh, when they saw the movie for the first time, there were only them, and, uh, and we show we show them the movie uh, when it was uh, all, um, uh, possible to to cut or uh, because it was important for us that they agree with the movies, and the community uh, um, happened the, um, um, at this moment when they saw the movie, and suddenly they discover the story of everybody, and that everybody have playing have play, played the game and uh, and they were really res uh, uh, they had beaucoup de respect les uns par rapport aux autres they much respect and and uh, and they, they, they never lo uh, love at the wrong moment they were sometimes laughing but not when when somebody was talking s something really deep or really uh, sad for example when paul is talking about his fa his father Policy Indian guy. Nobody loved at this moment, and, uh, and it was really cute and and, and strong to see the, this community uh, appear, and, uh, because they did it, so they have something in, in common. And, uh, That's how this, the the sh the, uh, the space produced by a film um, can become the promise of a of a common space in terms, I mean, social and political terms. So. And one thing is that, yeah, I think one of your references was Hitler Connaît Pas uh, by Yvette which is a, a documentary uh, shot in 1963, in which I, actually, ethically, does, it's not the same, because he edits, so it's, a, I mean, you, you, you might want to talk about this film, but it's a very famous, beautiful documentary shot in 63. Hitler Connaît Pas Hitler, I don't know, I mean, of the generation who had already forgotten about World War II, and it's 13, 11? Um, young women and men, uh, age 20, who talk about their, their lives, but it's edited in a, in a very, man, yeah, they have listening uh, scenes of, uh, and it's, it's, it's manipulative, it's not, it's not at all like this. Mm. But it was in terms of the density of testimonies, it's definitely a reference. I think that's a good 
Because that's what you had told me actually. Mm -hmm. What is that film? Hitler ne connaît pas. 1963, Bertrand Blier, who went. Uh, he was he was very very young when he made this film, and then afterwards he made more mainstream comedies. But it's a very important film, also in the history of of documentary film. I mean, I'd also, if we are, I guess. Uh, we were asked to think about how does this film fit in the series. Is this the last film in the series? It is. Um, maybe folks uh, who have been through the series might have some ideas about that, how this is a film of resistance. And I was thinking about that uh, and trying to figure out what that meant. And there, on the one hand, it's resisting the narrative of the banlieue and not refusing to give, a, uh, in, one, what, in one of your interviews, you called a, a regard condescendant, a condescending um, a portrayal of the bon Dieu, that seems relatively clear that there's something more powerful and more humanizing here and even in a difficult context, uh, in a context that the, as the French say, défavorisé, uh, out of favor, unfavored, um, unprivileged, underprivileged, uh, there's a space to dream, there's a space to imagine otherwise, there's a space just to have fun, to laugh, to be silly. Uh, but I was also thinking there's a rat, there are a couple other things that the the right to fantasy, not just to dream that I want to be a surgeon or a stylist, but to imagine that Mickey Mouse is a serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> the right to fantasy is one that's that's really not given um, to certain of us, and the radicalism of granting that right and even collaborating with that. So you realize the, the fantasies there of uh, I'm in the parade and the crowds are waving at me or the drones are coming. <laughs> um, I think that there's a resistance or a radicalism inherent in that gesture, in that choice too. And I also think in the, this moment or these moments that I was just highlighting because they, they strike me, there's something radical and resistant going on there too. There's, how many films are there where young men and women of color are given the space to be fragile and vulnerable and silent? Because those moments of listening are also moments of silence where you can see that they're uncomfortable. You can see that they're pausing, that they're hesitating, that they're... Sometimes they're amused, sometimes they're the space to contemplate too. Sometimes it's a kind of taking the space to not have something to say, to not have to describe yourself or defend yourself or give your background, but just to be silent. There's something really resistant in that, in opening up that space. And that's what those, those interspersed moments of listening do. Because the people who are listening are not saying anything. They're... <laughs> that. Uh, there's something really interestingly resistant about that to me. Um, I'm not sure what the right name for it is, but I, but I really like that, uh, that effect. Um, that was also not a question. <laughs> I'm trying to save you from questions today. Uh, we, we called, uh, there is one scene uh, in the movie where they are completely silent and you see everybody. Yeah. And, uh, in France, after the terrorist attacks um, in the media, on reprochait à cette jeunesse de pas avoir fait de ne pas avoir respecté la minute de silence après les attentats. Yeah, after the attacks in Paris, um, um, it was the day after um, a minute of silence was organized, and some of the youth, I mean, it was said so, uh, from the banlieue of the outskirts of Paris, did not want to obey this order of, 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 of yeah, respecting this minute of silence, so it was very, I suppose, all over the media. But when you, when you are talking with teachers from uh, saint sarny that kind of suburb, uh, good teachers, they, they all say, uh, uh, if you explain, if you, if you, uh, uh, it's always okay, and the kids are, are making silence. It's just teenagers. It's hard to make silence with teenager everywhere. Uh, when you ask teenager to shut up, they don't shut up. So, uh, <laughs> so, uh, and, and 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 you have to just to explain before. And, uh, and, 
why we are making silence and do a, a conversation about that and 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 the teacher was saying it it's, uh, it, it was always okay when we were talking before and uh, so so um, that's really the the, the editor uh, Isabel uh, and she did that and she called that uh, the, um, the the minute of silence mm -hmm. yeah. is that where you got all your cutaways from sorry is that where you got all your cutaways because you said they were in the room by themselves giving an interview but you have all these cutaways of them as though they're listening so how did you get those cutaways from that moment of silence, each one? Oh, it was... Well, uh, yeah, we'll take one more comment. And also, we'll need a microphone for the audience's <laughs> questions. What was it? How did you find it? I think it was uh, just a moment of, uh, between two questions, or uh, they were just waiting, or, or, or listening to a question. Uh, yeah, they're not the same moment as the... Yeah, we didn't the ask them, uh, do silent now, and we are filming. <laughs> no, it was... No, 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 no. It was moment of life or, or, of silent. Uh, well, but you use those moments to amplify what somebody else was saying, as though that person was listening to that person. Yes, yes, sure. they weren't in the room at all. No, no, no. It was no, a little bit no, no, but uh, as I said before, we always respect, I think, what they could think at this moment. Mm -hmm. But it was not... Uh, uh, they, 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 they were alone, because if you take teenagers, a band of teenagers, and somebody, one of them is talking, uh, uh, the other are laughing, or it's impossible to have that kind of uh, uh, um, words uh, if they are not alone. So. Yeah. I, I wouldn't... I don't know if that, that's... Partly what I was trying to say that yes, it creates that choral or or that um, that dialogic effect, but I'm not sure it's always amplification. That, that's what I meant. That the, the the flavor of it, there's a dissonance in it too. I, I understand what you're saying that you didn't um, you didn't betray the the uh, the approaches or the the positions in relation to the questions being raised of the various speakers but it's a, it's a game with the audience too i mean it's a little game it's but there mirror. but yeah. there are moments when the person you cut to isn't necessarily laughing or isn't necessarily responding in a legible way mm -hmm. sometimes it's not clear that 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 the person is sometimes you can use just a shot to show that the person who's listening to you is really getting it, or really with you. And not all your shots do that. Some of them, they, the glances are off to the side, or they're, they, you're not sure they're paying attention. And that, that's, it's that effect that, I, that I'm interested in, that I was trying to describe. You could call it resistant contemplativity? <laughs> There's a theor theoretical term, yeah, sure. Um, I have yeah. a question for you, actually. Uh, were you surprised to see so many uh, reference, cultural ref references to what could we call, or what we would call actually in France, mainstream American culture? And Obama, for instance, by being referenced. <laughs> of course, Hollande is just, you know, was desperately uh, not, you know. Poor Hollande. Yeah. But Beyonce and Tupac, you know. 50 this, Cent. And 50 Cent, yeah. Mm -hmm. I know that if it's also your references in a way, so you kind of like maybe kept them in the editing. But it's, I think it's also very interesting to screen this from here. Uh, here in New York, and because it definitely, I mean, you have a mirror of what has been yeah. transmitted or and adopted um, in France or by these kids, and refracted, I mean, refracted. remade how they how they see Obama. No, I don't think it's surprising at all if you know um, popular culture. I'm mean, not just in France, uh, but around the world, the travels of American culture. That's a relatively banal thing to notice, and. Um, that Beyonce gets around. <laughs> I can't say I'm surprised. <laughs> um, but the, and as we were talking about it, s recent films that some of which I've taught, like uh, Girlhood, Bon Défi, bon uh, there are similar things where there's a Rihanna song in the middle of Girlhood. Um, this goes back at least as far, well, I would say it actually goes back further in French film, mm -hmm. but in terms of this particular space in French film and like hip hop, particularly and black popular culture, um, in a contemporary sense, it goes back at least to La Haine, right? 
um, and the way rap is so central in, in the Cassavitz film. Um, what, is it, what is it called in English? Is it just called Hate? Lion. Um, and that's, what has that been, 20, 26, 27 years, that film opened up a whole space um, that feels pretty familiar to me. Um, I do th I do think... It's Jim Jarmusch on your side. He's, he's a, he's yeah, I, but the, the questions of refraction, of the way things get translated and remade when they're carried over, is an interesting one. And the title, I, I was trying not to ask you about the title, uh, but that's one way we could come at it. Um, and there's something that, that's a word that has come partly into French, but you're finding a different route to it there in the end with the reference to Shakespeare mm -hmm. and the etymological, the origins of the word swagger, meaning to sway in a prideful way in that Shakespeare puts into print in a number of his plays in, in the 1590s. Um, the way that comes through African-American popular culture and through hip hop into the, the meanings of swag that we're probably familiar with in English into French, as you were saying at the beginning. Um, but then gets actually taken back out into English, because your film is not called J'ai du swag or Ta du swag. It's not, a, it's not the French usage, it's the English word. And you don't really say, I don't think you say swagger. <laughs> Bye. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for questions Hello again. <laughs> Bye. The building, the building has a mind of its own. It's, it's really boring, so <laughs> go to I bed I think it's now. a sign. I think it's, it's no, a what, sign about swagger, because it was out of date. That you wanted to call your film swag, and then you yeah. realized that they, they didn't use anymore this term in Yeah, French. Yeah, uh, because when I came, uh, you know, in Les Soubois, the kids were saying swag, you got swag, and, uh, and uh, six months after, I asked uh, Regis, uh, what do you think about swag? I wanted to talk with him about swag, and he said, but we don't say swag anymore. We say swagans, uh, swagologues, tes uh, soins, tes frères. He looked like, at me like an uh, old sock doll. Uh, what are you talking about? Uh, swag is finished. But, uh, so, uh, it was a shame for me, but, uh, but I wanted to, to, to to, still, still to keep <laughs> something, so I uh, made some research and I discovered yeah, that the origin was so so ancient, uh, so old. Yeah, yeah. But um, but uh, it's an interesting uh, uh, work because in the fifties, uh, Sinatra uh, people was uh, were saying that Sinatra got swagger because he was a bad boy. He was. Mm -hmm. um, Got mafia uh, uh, friends. He was drinking alcohol, and uh, and he, in the nineties, in the black uh, neighborhood in, in the U.S., they start to say swag and swag, and it it came to to a nesuwa. But uh, for me, the re uh, I I chose this title because swagger is to have an it, it's not about fa fashion, but it's uh, to have a you, if you have an attitude, uh, if you are, um, you relève la tête. Uh, yeah. Hold, Hold your, your head, head up. up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why don't we let people ask questions? Yeah, I think the lights was uh, it was a sign to open up the conversation, please. So there's a microphone, and you have to. Yeah. <laughs> and then I saw. I wanted to raise the question of race. Um, and I guess uh, I want to put it two ways. On the one hand, you're French and white. Um, and I wondered what that relationship, how that relationship worked itself out, either by mistrust at the outset, they talk about all the white French people who have moved out and so forth. So, so you're not being in the film I find that position actually more complicated when, uh, in racial terms. I mean, you're not big brother, uh, but you're sort of not one of them either. And so then the question becomes, was your crew of color, for example? So that's one part of my question. My other has to do with aroma. Um, 
you clearly asked that question because they're all answering it. And I guess I want to ask you, did you know in advance the answer to that question? Because it, it complicates racial and the othering of the other. So I just wanted to ask you about that. Euh, la première question, c'est euh, quoi je, je, Comment je suis blanc, ça je sais, mais. <rire> Est-ce qu'il y avait euh, des Noirs et des Arabes dans l'équipe C'était pas la question. Euh, non, mais un peu, quoi. Euh, euh, Thank you, should switch to Yes Yes to what? <laughs> there were some black people in the crew, if, yeah, if that's the question. No, and, uh, but uh, not, not so much, we were, we were a lot of white. And, uh, uh, but, um, so, yes, that's my answer. Well, <laughs> but but the, racial, the racial are... politics is there, and that's a factor in the value. One of the things you talk about in the interviews, in terms of the educational milieu, the white people that you see in these schools the ones that are there are the teachers. Yes. You see um, one teacher. No, I'm not talking about in the film. I'm talking about in the schools in the banlieue. Well. And uh, but you talk in. I, I just go ahead. I just want to say that uh, only Subwa is a particular um, suburb in France. Uh, uh, when I showed the movie in Saint Denis, the city of Saint Denis, there was a, a black guy who grew up in a project in Saint Denis. He said to me, yeah, I like your movie, but I think it's car caricatural, because uh, in my project there were uh, uh, Jewish, uh, Portuguese, uh, French, and uh, the French mean white. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's important, because yeah. In, in France, we have many problems with words and uh, <laughs> many. <laughs> but, uh, uh, we don't say white uh, and black. We, and we say black. Well, we say black noir. instead of noir. Yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> that's another. Uh, but this guy say to me, yeah, in my, in my project it was not like that. And I say to him, yeah, uh, uh, for sure. But only Suba is a particular uh, uh, area because uh, it's like. Uh, in a certain way, it's like Detroit because uh, there were a uh, car industry that broke broke up. So so many people were uh, with no job. So people leave leave only and and, uh, and for the Roma. Well, yeah. before that, because yeah. you're avoiding the opening question, which yeah. had to do with your position as a white man making a film in this context of the racial politics? But for me, it was uh, two different things. Yeah, I, uh, uh, when I came there, I, 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 uh, suddenly I, I realized that I'm white. <laughs> I, I, know, I know that I'm white, but uh, uh, I was in front of uh, black and Arab kids. There are a few whites in all in Suba, but there are uh, Kosovo, Rush, uh, from Russia, from Poland, and uh, that, that's why I ask them the question on, on the old, um, do you know French people, do you know white people? Because I feel uh, really white there. Uh, but um, but for me it was because I grew up in Strasbourg and uh, and 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 I was when I was kids I was hanging around in my neighborhood with Arab kids, black kids, Portuguese kids. So in a certain way it was like um, uh, meet again my um, mes amis d'enfance, my yeah, yeah. childhood friends. friends. So. I'll, I'll I, would. I was not. I, I didn't grow up in a white ghetto. I was uh, uh, at the public school. But with, you are white. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. The question of <laughs> but, uh, the function of uh, why I didn't want to to keep my my questions and uh, that was one of you. My my uh, no. For me, it was important just to have the, 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 the word of the kids and no sociologue, no teachers, no policemen, just kids talking and, 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 and I, have, I have really tried to be uh, in, inside their brain and watch, watch the world as they, as they watch it. That's, that's why there is no adult, there is no parole of adult. All I was going to say quickly is that the I mean, obviously it's true that there's a, yeah. there's a 
differential and there's a power dynamic and that that becomes part of the fabric of the film mm -hmm. but difference would work itself into the fabric of any film no matter who the filmmaker was if the filmmaker would black would were black or Martinique it would that difference would play out in a different way in relation to the uh, the racial mix of the kids that he or she was interacting with so th that you know that, that that to me is something that you can think through and think through in relation to what collaboration means. That were the first thing I said. Um, but it's not as though difference wouldn't be a factor if it were a black or, an, or a Maghreb, a North African filmmaker making the film. It'd be a factor in a different way. Uh, we could talk about gender and sexual. We haven't even talked about sexuality yet, but there's a whole conversation to have about sexuality in the film um, that is very interestingly on the surface and never quite said. Uh, <laughs> there's another question. Yeah, no, it's a, <laughs> sir, yeah. Uh, Kenneth Harris, um, merci beaucoup pour le, pour le film et le discours. Um, so, your film makes me kind of sad. Um, I'm actually from Baltimore. I, you know, my Franco father, I just got back from Paris and actually stayed in Omni, uh, so what? Um, the film is, I think, beautiful in a lot of ways, um, but there is, you know, me being from Baltimore, you know, I connect to places like Sarcelles and Bobigny and Omni, um, and I guess, you know, the, there are elements of hope and, and beauty in, in the film, um, but I, I Part of my question, part of my thought is a comment and then part is a question. So I, I wonder on the one hand, like these kids, uh, are they, they seem relatively optimistic about their life and their prospects. I'm curious about, since it's been about two years now, where are they now? How do they feel about their life and their prospects? And are they going to be able to become the, the full people that they want to be in modern French society? And I just, I, I'm concerned about that. Thank you. I'm going to answer you your question. I just want to say something about Baltimore. <laughs> it's, no, it's just because uh, the father of Naila, Naila is a girl who is talking about Mickey Mouse and she wants to be an architect. And the father of Naila told me that. Uh, uh, you know, Olivier, uh, all the um, uh, uh, drug dealers in Olney, all the bad guys, uh, saw uh, The Wire. And they were inspired by The Wire because it's really documented about, uh, you know, how we to use the phones and everything. And, uh, and, uh, and that's sad. That, that's sad in a way because only Suba is like Baltimore now. Uh, not because of the, only because of the wire, but I mean, you have kids with guns and uh, and and uh, sleep in the car and uh, well, that was it. <laughs> and, but, a quick point about that. As a matter of fact, it's funny because I, I just started watching Cannabis, uh, which is kind of like the French version of the wire. And literally in the first scene, they ha I see like Baltimore like on a, on a wall, like a graffiti. Mm. What about this? interesting? Okay. Yeah. And uh, and. and 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 uh, and and uh, yeah. And you want to know what they are, they are doing now, you the kids? You want to know how they feel about like what's going to happen in their lives. Um, so they are eleven. So so it take a, a long time. <laughs> people like waving at me. No, not yet. So. But uh, so it depends on the kids. Uh, uh, Aisatu, for example, Aisatu. The girl who cannot say her name at the beginning. Uh, she wanted to. It, it, it don't take a long time. No? <laughs> but, uh, not to. to uh, well, uh, no, je, je peux continuer en anglais, mais, um, I remember when I was in Saint uh, uh, I, I was with, with them, all of them. And people were asking him, uh, uh, so what are you doing now? What do you want to do? And, and, and I was really happy with that because they all say, I want to be a um, um, uh, fashion designer. I want to be a uh, uh, infirmière, uh, nurse. nurse uh, uh, 
before uh, uh, I want to be an actor or I want to work in the, in the film Some industry. Is. And I was happy with that because I've always said to them, uh, 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 you're not actor, it's a documentary. Because we were in Cannes, we, we got, it was uh, incredible to go there and uh, the red carpet and everything and TV and uh, they were on French TV. And, but they, 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 they kept their head cold about that and, th and th that's important for me but uh, but uh, we were talking about that Abu and Aaron Aaron it's uh, the guy who, who dreamed that he, he was president of France and Abu it's the other guy with that and uh, uh, they, 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 they are uh, uh, learning cinema now they, they, they are in the faculty of, of cinema and Aaron sent Absolutely. me a message uh, yesterday uh, yes I, I have an idea of a script uh, of a script uh, could you help me and, 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 uh, and when he was on French TV Aaron said something interesting uh, to a journalist he said uh, 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 yes stop uh, always um, uh, uh, talking about uh, drug story uh, because that's the mythology of uh, project scene, um, uh, movies, and uh, uh, yes, it's always because it's uh, parce que c'est spectaculaire. Uh, on s'intéresse toujours uh, à la délinquance. And Crime is a show. And he say we need to do comedy <laughs> about <laughs> projects. We need to make comedies. And, uh, 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 and uh, Regis actually is uh, study in a very good school of uh, fashion school. Uh, a rich guy contact me uh, uh, and, uh, and he said to me I want to help uh, Regis and Paul uh, so he find a good uh, uh, fashion uh, school to, 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 to Regis and Regis, oui, il était en stage chez Vogue et wow. uh, <laughs> But Regis, he, he go to the fashion week since he's uh, 15 years old and he was making fake uh, uh, CVs CV to go to the fashion week. And he, got, he got selfie with uh, Kim Kardashian. On Facebook he say, oh, uh, I saw Kim the other day and she said to me. But it's, uh, I hope he's gonna, he's gonna be a, a fashion stylist. Uh, and uh, he a eu mention très bien au bac. Uh, he had A plus or an um, A level, you say here? A level? No, it's England. So it's, he did very well. He did very well at high school. He graduated with, with A plus, yeah, with honors at high school. Yeah. So and, they went, yeah. And, uh, all of them, actually. All of them had the, the, the bac. Oui, ceux qui ont passé is, le bac ont eu le bac. Yeah, they all graduated from high school, which is not um, automatic. Uh, Naila, uh, she don't want to be the an architect is. anymore. She wants to be a football player, <laughs> and uh, and I, I was uh, con contacted by a big uh, architect uh, uh, cabinet in French who want to yeah. take her. And, I, uh, and the last one, it's the biggest uh, architect uh, uh, office in France. And and the woman, she, she said to me, yes, uh, because I, I say to her, she don't want to be an architect anymore. And, uh, and, uh, and she said to me, I have uh, um, tickets for her for, for the uh, woman uh, football uh, final. So, but uh, uh, Sébastien Chani is, is, is a teacher uh, that you see, we, we see in the movie. Uh, uh, Qui, 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 les, qui leur fait euh, étudier les oiseaux là. Oh oui, il était montré. Il contacte, il me dit, il dit, yeah, Naila, uh, uh, I don't know what's happening. Uh, 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 ses résultats scolaires étaient en baisse. Her grades were going down. <laughs> and um, and it was really, I think it was a tough year for Naila because um, uh, have you heard about uh, the, the Théo affair in France? Uh, so Théo, he, he was a, a, a black guy. He was a, 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 a pas un prof de sport, mais un. Ah, il Educator, uh, sport. Educator, sport. Coach? Yeah. yeah, coach, but in a, it's a, it's a state-funded job, so it's really to work in the community. So I don't know if you know the story, but the, 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 yeah. the, there was big riot in Olney because this guy Theo was uh, uh, 
a été violé par la police. Il est basically right by a police office, by police officers, and there's a, a justice pour Théo is a, is now an institution. And, and he was uh, the sport um, uh, educator of Naila. Yeah. Oh. And uh, uh, so when I saw after this affair, she was really uh, 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 full of hunger and uh, anger. and uh, and. And uh, and after during the riot, there was helicopter and uh, <laughs> a gun uh, uh, fight just near uh, Naila house, and um, and the same week, so 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 the kids were afraid about police, and the parents were saying to the kids uh, to 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 be really. Um, afraid about the police, and, and, and they were right because there, there is a problem with the police in Olney. There, there are some uh, uh, dangerous and violent cops, and uh, so she was. She, uh, this little girl, she was afraid about cops. And during the same week, uh, uh, one guy had been killed uh, in in her street, uh, a, um, a gangster. Uh, uh, and uh, so at the same time she was scared about police and the police didn't protect uh, uh, the people, I mean uh, the, the, the real job of police is to protect from the, from the gangsters. So, so I think maybe because of that she, she's... Uh, but now she, it, it's better. Uh, Sebastian, the, the teacher, talked to her and, uh, and he said to me, Mm -hmm. That uh, she she's going back on. and the mother of Naila thinks that she's going to be a sport uh, teacher. Mm -hmm. There was a third question. Um, so that's a part. <laughs> but uh, I'm I'm I'm, ju I'm, ju I'm scared about Paul uh, because Paul it's the India's guy. It's the only one who who says that he wants to work with um, uh, drug dealers and uh, he is an, he's, he's in a very difficult situation. And I think he got a lot of courage courage and dignity not brave. to work with the drug dealers because his father is crazy, uh, mother is on, uh, au chômage, uh, unemployed. unemployed. Uh, he got two little, uh, one little sister and one little brother, so it's really difficult for him, but uh, and he's full of uh, uh, talent. But, um, no, so thank you for telling us about them because we do end up caring about these kids individually. But I wanted to get back to a more general question, which has to do not so much with your position in the film, but the position of the camera in the film and some of the choices you made to have the camera fly into the rooms in the high-rise buildings and the drones. And we have these very different perspectives, this incredible intimacy with which you do the close-ups and the interviews, and then these very long-range views, which actually in some ways mimic the surveillant. And then you talked about helicopters and sort of ways in which these children are also always being watched. They're, you know, they, they seem very independent and strong in the film, but around what you're actually not showing us is the incredible danger that they talk about, but it's not, you know, it's beautifully sort of kept out of the film so that we can actually focus on their interiority. Uh, and yet, the camera does kind of mimic this uh, bird's eye view that shows us the, the vulnerability of this, uh, of this whole space. So I, I wanted you to talk a little bit about that choice. For me, the first the first shot of, of the movie was uh, uh, um, this is a project. This is. Uh, project from the outside and and we go inside and, and as I said before and, and we're gonna see people and in the individuality mm -hmm. oh yeah there is a young guy uh, il est en train de coudre la machine sewing with this machine with this guy and uh, and, uh, um, and for the drones and the, the drones of the future and the uh, um, in France, uh, 
Euh, after, euh, c'est, c'est un, un attaque. Il y a eu une attaque de la, de la police. Il y a, il y a des, des jeunes qui ont envoyé un cocktail Molotov dans une voiture de police euh, qui a brûlé. Molotov. Non, c'est cocktail. C'est un So, when was it? Euh, c'était à la, à la Grande Borne, euh, bon, il, il y a eu un fait divers comme ça. Euh, euh, so some, some kids uh, threw a mount of cocktail in a police car. And after that, uh, our uh, minister of uh, the interior, interior. Well, inter- interior? Yeah. say uh, uh, we're going we can, uh, we can to send drones to, to send projects. Yeah. And uh, so when I... S- when in the movie you see the future, uh, uh, because we actually we are living in uh, état d'urgence uh, in France. Uh, emergency state. Just in state, yeah, state of emergency. So for me it was, uh, uh, what we're going to do, is that the next step? Just uh, uh, send uh, police drones in, in, the, in the project, and, and there's always going to be Regis who is preparing to go to school. And, and, uh, but... Um, hmm. You, but you can read it in relation to the, if you think of it <clears throat> in terms of collaboration and the way the film is collaborative, part of, as, as we've been talking about or we started talking about, you're taking on board the stories they're telling. And I read it formally, that's the way I would interpret it. But you're giving a different explanation. But formally, that's the way I took it, that it was the film not only dramatizing her fearful imagination of the future with drone surveillance, but it becomes a methodology of the film. Because you remember, I don't know how you actually did that, but it made me think back to that first scene, and it's a drone. And it, it, as a viewer, and also in terms of the way you're positioned as a director, it says, it asks the question, how do you get to intimacy? How do you get in Regis's room? And it suggests that the only way we, as far away as we are, get into the intimate spaces of the Bonneau is through a certain kind of surveillance and invasion. So it makes it impossible for us to just presume that we can waltz into some easy intimacy with Rishis or, or any of these characters. So I read it as a kind of um, implication of you as filmmaker and of me as viewer. I felt very awkward to be put in the position of... she. The Naila also is telling... One of the moments when she's telling... A, uh, I don't remember if it's a Mickey Mouse story, but another story of horror, there's another aerial shot. Um, so I read those two as going together in a, in a way that I felt implicated me. Mm-hmm. Even if you didn't intend it that way, that's what the film did. <laughs> I'm receiving very explicit signs from the very generous and patient uh, team from the auditorium that I think, I'm afraid, time is over. Um, I would like to thank Olivier Badinier and Brent Edwards and the others. I'd like to thank Jean-Pierre and la Maison Française and the Lenfest Center for um, welcoming us and the audience again for being so faithful to the film series. I think it was important to show these films and I thank you again for your attending. Thank you. Thank you.